What better way to start off the new year than with some new Steven Universe? This week's Steven Bomb featured several moments in the series that fans have been waiting for. There was an origin story for Ruby, Sapphire, and Garnet. Steven's birthday and his age was shown, but most important though, we get a resolution to Peridot's time with the Crystal Gems, and the cluster arc seems really close to its end. So first, I'll go ahead and talk about each individual episode in the Steven Bomb. I'll be recapping the episode and I'll discuss what I liked, what I disliked, what worked, what didn't work, etc. Afterwards, I'll go ahead and rate the Steven Bomb as a whole, based on how well the individual episodes did and how well they all worked together. Also, I will be going in-depth about the episodes and there are spoilers, so if you haven't seen the episode yourself yet, I'd suggest watching them, coming back here after you're done. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. The first episode was The Answer, where Garnet wakes Steven up at midnight on the day of his birthday. He's excited because today is the day she's going to reveal that she's a fusion of the gems Ruby and Sapphire. But seeing as how he already knows that, Garnet instead uses this time to tell him the story of how Ruby and Sapphire first met. Now I enjoyed the episode, but I have some issues with how they made this origin story for Ruby, Sapphire, and Garnet. In the story, Sapphire is a rare aristocratic gem with the power to see into the future. She was sent along with several other homeworld gems to do something about the rebels. Assigned to protect her were three Rubies who are just common soldiers. When the rebels attack, Sapphire predicts that several gems, including she and two Rubies, will be destroyed, but the rebels will shortly be captured. But fate is changed when her final ruby soldier leaps in to protect her, resulting in a fusion between the two of them. Ruby and Sapphire run off together after Ruby ascends to be destroyed for fusing with Sapphire. After bonding with each other, they decide to fuse again. The confused Garnet finds the rebels, and Rose Quartz tells her not to ask any questions, because she is the answer to every question that she may have. Now as I said, I have some issues with this being their origin story. See, Garnet says this is the story of how Ruby and Sapphire first met so we can assume they had no prior contact to each other before this mission. At the end of the story, Garnet asks Rose Quartz, how was Ruby able to alter fate? Why was Sapphire willing to give up everything? And most importantly, what is she? Rose simply says Garnet is the answer. Steven asks Garnet what was the answer, and Garnet replies the answer was love. Now this bothers me because this means Ruby already loved Sapphire before they accidentally fused, and we are shown no reason for her to love Sapphire. If this really is the very first time they met, how does Ruby already love Sapphire enough to change fate? They never interact except for when Ruby gets shoved into Sapphire and she just brushes it off. Now I can understand the two of them fell in love after they fused because of how close they built, or they fell in love during their time on Earth because that led to them being able to rely only on each other. But I don't understand why Ruby already loved Sapphire. Sure, Ruby was a loyal soldier, but this is not loyalty, this is love. And at this point in the story, if this is truly the first time they met, then there is no reason for Ruby to love Sapphire. Okay, yes, you can make an argument, it's love at first sight, but in my opinion, that weakens the relationship they have with each other. They have such a close bond that saying it was love at first sight just diminishes that. Several fans were hoping for either a Romeo and Juliet type story, where one was with Homeworlds, the other was with the Rebels, or perhaps a story where they came from two very different social classes, but they learned, hey, we're not so different after all. The story we got was much closer to the second one, with Ruby being a common soldier and Sapphire being a rare aristocratic gem, but I still feel we didn't get enough interactions to show the love and the bond that they have. I also wish we got to see more Rebels other than just Rose and Pearl, but this was an episode made for Garnet, and I'm sure the Rebels will have an episode to themselves someday, since these flashback episodes are becoming much more common. Under some positives though, I love Garnet's first appearance. It shows they are not sure of what's going on. It isn't natural, it isn't well formed because Ruby and Sapphire are still just figuring things out. Even when they fuse on purpose, it looks all over the place. It was a nice touch that Blue Diamond and the other gems were voiced by Garnet. Since Steven is the one imagining this, he shouldn't know what they sound like. The only characters that have voices are those that he knows what they sound like. But those that he doesn't know, it's Garnet telling the story, so they're voiced by Garnet. It's also nice to see a different Garnet than the one we're used to, personality-wise. This time, Garnet is confused. She stumbles around. She's unsure of herself, much different than the Garnet we know. One final note, I love the song in this episode. It nicely showed how Ruby and Sapphire feel about their change, about them surviving together, living together. If we got more of that, more of this interaction, more of them together, I would have loved this episode so much more. But as it is, I feel Ruby and Sapphire's first meeting is kind of brushed, and I just don't see how this works. It would work much better if this wasn't the first time they met. They had established some kind of history between the two gems. Maybe Ruby was a common bodyguard of Sapphire. Or maybe Ruby constantly liked to work with Sapphire. Maybe Sapphire requested to have Ruby work with her. 
something that they had some kind of history, because if this is the first time that they meet, Ruby does not have a good enough reason to love Sapphire enough to change fate as it is. But enough about that, on to the next episode, Steven's birthday. Now, I'm gonna get this out of the way right now, this was my least favorite episode in the Steven Bomb. This episode was kind of all over the place in terms of what was going on. It had a good plot with Connie worrying about Steven not growing up normally. Steven overhears this and he decides he needs to stretch himself out to look taller and look older. Throughout the episode, we see Steven is struggling to keep himself together. Eventually the strain is too much and he turns into a baby. It was at this point that I was done with the episode. Connie decides she'll stay there for him, stay there to take care of baby Steven, and that she doesn't care how old he is, she wants to be with him. The next morning, Connie wakes up and is worried Steven isn't there, but when she finds him, he's back to normal. Like I said, it's kind of all over the place. They were going somewhere with Connie worrying about Steven not growing up, and Steven worrying about Connie growing up without him. But then this baby stuff happens. Why does he turn into a baby? Why does he turn back? Who cares? It doesn't matter. Okay, I guess the point of the baby stuff was to have Connie realize she doesn't care how old Steven is. She wants to be there with him no matter what. But I feel there could have been a better way to do that because this comes out of nowhere. And honestly, this episode reminds me a little bit too much of too many birthdays. They're kind of the same basic thing in my opinion. During Steven's birthday, he worries about his age, he rapidly begins to age, and then he turns back to normal by the end. Okay, yes, I'll admit, that is very oversimplified on my part, but the comparison works to an extent. I also like the fact that Steven and Connie's ages were given, since we can go from there, we have somewhere to go from. I also really love the fact Steven implies he wants to marry Connie someday, because he said, she's gonna be president, what would that leave me, first boy? Lastly, I wish Peridot was in this episode a little more. It would have been nice to see her question what a birthday is, have some kind of interaction with Connie. I'm waiting for the day Peridot and Connie have some kind of interactions, because that's going to be really nice, I hope. The next episode, it could have been great. The drill is pretty much finished, but Peridot realizes they don't have the coordinates for the cluster. The only place they could get the coordinates from is a gem base on the moon! Since they can't warp there, they have to use Lion to get there. On the moon base, Peridot is overjoyed at seeing all of the new gem tech. Sure, it's pretty outdated by modern standards, but compared to what they have on Earth, this is just amazing. They find a gem console that should have the coordinates for the cluster. And on that console, she also finds the original plans that Homeworld had for Earth. She's amazed at how great it could have been, hence the title, while well, all the other crystal gems are just appalled by this. Peridot still does not understand why the gems care so much, and Steven begins to wonder, will you ever understand? Peridot decides to take something back before heading back to their gems, unaware Steven saw her. Now I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it could have been great. And it was! Okay, bad jokes aside, there was a lot I really liked in this episode. We get to see portraits of blue, yellow, and white diamond, leaving pink diamond the only diamond left unseen. Peridot also name drops and confirms the diamond authority, meaning that Ronaldo isn't that much of a conspiracy nut after all. It's also interesting to see what Homeworld had planned for Earth. It gives us a good idea what it's been doing to planets for millenniums and just how evil it really is, even though Homeworld probably doesn't see itself as evil. The song in this episode is pretty good. The first time I saw the episode, I thought it was way too long, but after a few times rewatching it, I realized it seems longer than it really is, because in the beginning, Steven and Peridot are talking while Steven plays music. That is not part of the song, but it feels like it should be part of the song, and it makes the whole song feel longer by extent. Either way, it has quickly grown on me, and it's becoming one of my favorites fast. Lastly, it's interesting that Peridot still doesn't understand how the Crystal Gems feel, and why they protect the Earth. She's still confused as to why they feel how they feel. And it's interesting that after all this time, she's still pretty confused. Message Receives picks up exactly where it could have been great ends. Steven confronts Peridot about what she picked up from the moon base and tricks her into the truck. Peridot reveals it is a direct communicator to the diamonds. Steven is mad. After all of this, Peridot still wants to reach Yellow Diamond. He leaves Peridot trapped in the truck and goes to tell the Crystal Gems about the communicator. The gems feel betrayed, Steven especially, since he believed in Peridot the most. Peridot attacks her in her robot and takes back the communicator. The gems follow after her, and Steven is sad about all this. Peridot manages to communicate with Yellow Diamond. This whole time, Yellow Diamond is annoyed with Peridot. She tells Peridot a ship will take her to her next assignment shortly, and that she is satisfied with the cluster growing. Here, Peridot tries to reason with Yellow Diamond on how to spare the Earth. Yellow Diamond loses her patience and berates Peridot. Peridot defies her, says she will not do this, and she goes as far as to say she knows more about Earth than Yellow Diamond. In fact, she goes far enough to call Yellow Diamond a clod. Peridot immediately is conflicted with this and she ends the transmission, unsure of what she just did. The other gems rejoice at this. Happy, Peridot is now a crystal gem. Honestly, I'm kind of conflicted about this episode. I really, really want to like it because it does so much good. 
but it just has issues. Let's start with the good this time, because there is more good than bad. Yellow Diamond has been a mysterious force for so long, and her reveal was amazing. Her voice is threatening. It works for her. The way she was revealed was so grand. Her design is kind of weird, but it just works for her, and her face has already become a meme. Peridot calling Yellow Diamond a clod was amazing. We finally got the pair redemption that we've all been waiting for. The gem's reaction to all this was nice, but honestly, and I do have to say honestly, I feel Peridot and her redemption were pretty rushed. I also don't like the fact that Steven feeling bad and learning you can't change everyone doesn't mean anything. It happens and it ends way too fast. He doesn't learn or grow from this. The next episode helps a little bit with Peridot's redemption feeling rushed, and that is Log Date 7152. It starts with Peridot freaking out about betraying Homeworld and Yellow Diamond. She decides to get rid of her, her recorder because it is a chronicle of her descent into madness. Steven decides to listen to them to see if he can help Peridot out. The episode is pretty much just Peridot trying to fit in with the gems learn about life on Earth, and show how she's changed. This was a nice and calm way to end the Steven Bomb. There were several funny moments, and it's nice to see how the Gems and Peridot interact. Peridot has had so many great moments, and this episode just shows that, and she has so many hilarious lines. Whether it be trying to observe organic flight capabilities by pushing Greg off the roof, leaving for him to say that a six-pack won't save him from a fall like that when Garnet says he's soft, Peridot re-watching the same episode several times and becoming a hardcore shipper using subtext, Peridot not understanding a joke because she does not know what a chicken is, and then later having Amethyst shapeshift into a chicken and get the joke completely, Peridot wondering if she has to have a star now that she's a crystal gem, this is all funny and this is all things that fans have been asking for. It shows them as people, it shows the crystal gems normal, just living lives. This is very well done and I'd love to see more of this because it's a side of the gems we don't see often enough. It might be kind of surprising, but this was my favorite episode of the Sea Bomb because it's different, it's unique, it's normal, it's natural. They're just people living their lives. Even if the world is going to be destroyed by the cluster, you don't really see that because they're just living life. So, what about the Steven Bomb as a whole? As a whole, it's kind of disconnected at times. Remember how I said Paradox Redemption felt rushed? Well, I feel part of that is because the first two episodes don't connect enough to the other three. This was set up and advertised as Steven's birthday week, but only the first two episodes are actually about Steven's birthday, and the other three are about Peridot. Now here's my idea for how to fix both the Steven Bomb issue and Peridot's redemption issue. First, the Steven Bomb is no longer Steven's birthday week. It's now Peridot week. Wednesday's episode, It Could Have Been Great, is moved over to Monday. Thursday's episode, Message Received, is moved to Tuesday, but it is changed so that this time Peridot doesn't completely betray Homeworld. She still keeps the identity of the Crystal Gems a secret, and she still suggests Yellow Diamond that they should terminate the cluster, because personally I feel at this point Peridot had the intention to plead for the cluster's termination. She contacted Yellow Diamond hoping she could terminate the cluster. However, this time when Yellow Diamond refuses, Peridot begrudgingly accepts. The communication ends and Peridot heads off, awaiting for the ship that will take her away. Steven tries to go after her, but the Gems say they have to let her go. They'll get her another day, but right now the cluster is their main priority. On Wednesday, we'll have a Peridot standalone episode. This can be the first ever episode where Steven and the Crystal Gems don't appear at all. In this episode, Peridot wanders around Beach City and eventually finds more of Earth and just wanders around Earth entirely, waiting for the ship that will take her away. As she continues, she continues to observe life on Earth, thinking about her time spent on Earth, her time with the Gems. She's trying to figure out what is the logical thing to do, because that is Peridot's entire character. She's the logical person. Logic overrides emotion. She thinks. She's a thinker. But this time, her emotions are conflicting with her thoughts. She doesn't know what is logic anymore. She doesn't know logically what to do. The only reason she made a truce with the Crystal Gems to destroy the Cluster was because of the fact that she was stuck on Earth. She didn't want to die. But now she's free. She's going to be off Earth soon. They're sending a ship for her. And she's going to be back to serving her perfect yellow diamond. Logically, she's doing the right thing. Logically, she should be happy. Logically, she shouldn't care about the Earth. So why does she feel conflicted? Why can she not think straight? Why does logic not make sense anymore? The episode can also feature a solo Peridot song, showing her conflict with herself. The episode would end with both the viewer and Peridot unsure of what's going to happen next. On Thursday, we have Log Date 7152, with a few changes. It opens with Steven sulking about Peridot's betrayal. As I said, Steven learning that you can't change everyone ultimately didn't matter in the actual episode. So this is meant to show some time has passed and he's still not over it. I want this to actually matter. 
He finds Paradox Recorder and thinks maybe if he listens to these recordings, he'll find where he went wrong with her, what he did wrong. The episode will play out as normal, and at the end of the episode, the Jams will com comfort Steven about Paradox. Then Garnet, the last person to bond with and the last person to accept Paradox, will be the first one to offer up. Perhaps she isn't completely changed back to how she was before. I mean, she did try to convince Yellow Diamond to spare the Earth, that's something. And then Pearl, the second to last person to accept Paradox, will say, yeah, she did that. Plus, she also kept our existence a secret. She kept the Crystal Gem secret from Yellow Diamond. Amethyst will jo join in and say there might be some hope for her, and all of this will lead Steven to realize that they made a difference in her life. The episode could end with Steven learning, it's true, you can't change everyone, but you can always make a difference, and you should always try to make a difference. Finally, the Steven Bomb will end on Friday. Friday's episode shows the gems trying to find Paradox, because she was the one who had the exact coordinates of the cluster for their drill. Paradox is having issues with herself from Wednesday's episode. She still has no idea what to do, so she decides maybe I should contact Yellow Diamond one more time. The gems find Paradox, and they are about to confront her when, she no when they notice she is about to use her communicator again. Yellow Diamond is furious. This is the second time Paradox has wasted her time with trivialities. Paradox tries to plead her case to Yellow Diamond about the Earth, but Yellow Diamond will not have any of it. She is furious, and she responds with something along the lines of, This is the second time you have wasted my time with your pointless suggestions. Unless you want to be stuck on that miserable rock when the cluster destroys it, you will do as I say. And it is here where Paradox will lash out against Yellow Diamond, and it is here where she will call her a clod, because come on, that has to happen. And the episode can end similar to how Message Receive ended, but with an extra moment where Paradox apologizes to Steven. Paradox can tell Steven that she is sorry, and Steven will say it doesn't matter, because you're a crystal gem now. And then this, this is where it all hits Paradox. It realizes Paradox is a crystal gem, Paradox a traitor. This is where she has a little crazy moment, because that was kind of funny. So with this version, the Steven Bomb focuses on Paradox. I feel it will properly lead up to her parademption. It will show a sign of a struggle, because honestly, I felt Paradox didn't really struggle with what she did. Sure, she had her crazy moment, but she didn't have that until afterwards. She didn't struggle with giving everything up. And also, it gives an importance that Steven learns you can't change everyone, but you should still try. Steven didn't learn anything. That came out of nowhere, and it led to nothing. So this is a nice way to change that. But for what we actually got, like I said, I enjoyed it. I really wish this wasn't set up as Steven's birthday week, because there's no real importance on Steven's birthday week. And the episode that was actually about Steven's birthday is the weakest one. Overall, I have to say, Steven Bomb 4, Steven's birthday week is great! It could have been a lot better, but all of the episodes were really good, and the final three episodes connected very nicely and gave us a Paradox Redemption we've wanted. Let me know what you thought of the fourth Steven Bomb. What was your favorite and your least favorite episode of the Steven Bomb? Finally, let me know what you thought of my hypothetical alternate Steven Bomb, where the focus is on Paradox and it builds up to her Parademption a little bit nicer. Either way, I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.